My presentation is about two states of West Africa in the 19th century. Why these states are important is because they are, um, uh, especially so called Caliphate, was the only case of proto-industrialization in Africa. This is why. And it was far away from the cause and the influence of the European. So this is why it's important. This is part of a, a broader research. And uh, my question uh, on this research was, did institution matters? And did uh, money matters? And I say yes. Uh, but because of money, um, uh, of course, West Africa had a multiple uh, currency structure, Maria Teresa dollars in the 19th century. Then uh, you have uh, low, uh, you have carry shares and clothes. Uh, most of these currency were imported. Uh, apart from uh, apart from uh, locally made clothes, both cowrie shells and uh, the Maria Teresa Dora were imported by foreign traders, and especially at uh, the beginning of the um, uh, let's say 11th century, Arabs start to import cowrie shell across the Sahara uh, with camels. Uh, from Maldives, so you can imagine the journey it means uh, uh, to take inside. Uh, uh, so, they, uh, Africa and especially West Africa never had in pre-colonial time, never had institutions like uh, uh, banking institutions like in Europe. Uh, most of the currency were working uh, on a regional basis. Um, why this was? Uh, first of all, West Africa, you can see, uh, it was divided in ecological area uh, because you have uh, the desert, the Sahel, you couldn't uh, cultivate the cotton of grain, but you have salt, uh, cattle, and coppers. And then you have the savanna, and you have in this part, you can have grains and uh, cotton. So there was a big exchange, a regional exchange between these two areas. I'm just talking on this area. And in this area, you have the trans-Saharan trade. Uh, what I'm trying to, um, uh, to understand, if um, why currency were behaving in a different way in this different area? I'm trying to see in the long period which was the change and why they were changing. Because yes, money, we have a, a different currency, but why they were changing. Uh, my idea, I'm trying somehow to apply um, Kuroda uh, theory of currency complementarity uh, on this area. And because the main theory on this area uh, is um, the formalist approach. They say, yes, they were mo like modern currency, especially cowries, but there was an, uh, some uh, currency that were more modern than others, like currency were, and clothes were not. And especially they, the approach they were using, the classical approach, was more that the money was making the market, and following the um, Kuroda approach, I say, no, it's the market making the money and the money changes with the market. Uh, uh, maybe it's useful to, to know, you especially have copper mine, salt mine, and gold. Gold mine before the, uh, they discovered America, a lot of gold came from here, uh, and there were not silver mines in uh, West Africa, so maybe this is important. So the first, because of trans-Saharan trade, uh, the first area to develop was this one. You probably know, you know Timbuktu, and especially there was a link with uh, Morocco. And uh, then um, the in, um, uh, so this area, you started to have uh, Arabs uh, introducing especially Islam. Islam in this area, and with Islam and this uh, diaspora of uh, uh, North African traders, um, you start to have the rise of mo uh, quite um, uh, well-organized states like Mali, Songhai, and Ghana. And basically, they were coming because of gold. 
uh, you know, to come from North Africa, it takes three months with camels. And you never had uh, technological innovation, just the use of camels. So uh, you can answer why. Uh, and uh, at one point, and, uh, most of these uh, states were using, uh, and, the, and the medieval period, were using gold dust, because the gold nuggets were used by the kings. And, uh, and uh, so with the introduction of Islam, an Islamic institution, commercial institution, you have the rise of professional local traders. First of all, they needed because the, uh, to go in this area, you need, uh, you do, you camel cannot go there. They need donkeys, uh, other technological. So there was the development and uh, my, uh, and the uh, introduction of Islamic uh, weight system and uh, numerical system and also commercial institution gave rise to these professional local traders. And uh, they were managing, they are important because they were managing the currency of the area, of course. Um, uh, uh, this, part, uh, this part of, uh, after uh, 1591, it was, there was invasion of uh, Morocco to this area, but you still have the, um, you still have the um, trans-Saharan trade, but this time it was more on slave, because in this part, uh, and you have the rise of these two states, the state time uh, studying, was Borno and the, uh, the, uh, the Hausa state that in 19th century will become the Sokoto Caliphate. And uh, so some uh, Khan, especially Borno, was uh, exporting especially trades because gold now was just coming from this area. So you have some uh, local traders going to this area, but was just a transit point for, from gold, especially here. And, uh, and now you began to have the rise of the city, Cano, that will become uh, the commercial, I mean, there was this um, uh, traveler, it was a German sent by foreign office called the Manchester of Africa. Uh, still, we have to know how it was possible, because you can see it was in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> you know, and his links, and he was able to export, uh, to compete with British at the end of the 18th century, even to export leather goods to New York from Tripoli. If you can think about commercial, I mean, <laughs> transaction costs <laughs> of this. Uh, so we still have, um, and uh, so, uh, sorry, I'm explaining this because I want to understand <laughs> uh, uh, which point, it's uh, difficult to understand why. So what I found that uh, Khanem never had gold, just a transit, but slaves. So it was a real change, but he had also political control on this area when you have uh, salt mine, so in, uh, and copper mines. So uh, between these two areas, you have cloth money and uh, copper and salt money. So uh, the, uh, in the, uh, between this uh, area. But instead, in, uh, in even in um, 16th, uh, 16th century, you start to have a uh, cowrie shell, a gold, uh, maybe dust or flakes, we don't know, in this area where it was Kano, because traders were coming, uh, there was a gold trade in here. So I want to understand which was the difference, because especially in the, uh, up to the, <coughs> The beginning of the 19th century, Borno was the leading uh, state of the area, especially because it was the uh, shortest road to the trans-Saharan trade. And I put here, the innovation of the 19th century is they started to introduce Maria Teresa dollars through this part. And uh, so I put for, I tried to make a, um, a model for the medieval period and see how it changed in, ta in, uh, in the year. So uh, I just, uh, I found that uh, a very interesting evidence about these first states, of course they have gold dust. One interesting thing is that the people, they were, uh, they had, uh, I mean, they were spending gold dust, 
but they uh, they have this tendency to um, uh, toward the, the the dust. So there was because the people were retaining the dust, uh, there were some problem. This is why probably this is why they started to uh, to introduce uh, cowries. We don't know. Uh, and um, uh, also foreign traders, these Arab traders, they use credit, especially in Mali. And the evidence is clear, it's a very safe place. Uh, this is a very risk uh, trade. So, uh, and it, I'm talking about uh, 14th century, so uh, you can imagine across the Sahara. And they started to have this relation, I still have some credit uh, in my paper I put. On the, I put this on, um, for small change, of course, they used the reg regional coins. And probably in the city, they started to use cowries. Uh, in the Hausa state, uh, I have to explain Sudan, it means Bilad uh, al uh, Sudan, the land of the blacks. So it's not Sudan, uh, you know, it's the central Sudan, uh, we call, I mean, Arabs call it the, this part of the land Sudan, the land of the blacks, let's say. We, we have gold, gold weights and dinners, and we have cowries. Uh, we found cowries because they were introduced by Arabs, uh, especially in the medieval South. So uh, when we have gold, we, uh, gold trades, you always have cowries, they say. On Carnival Day, I have this evidence of uh, silver, uh, silver dinners. I don't know which kind of dinners, probably coming from North Africa but the evidence is clear, and then you have copper and cloth. Um, so I'm just trying to see how it was changing pre-colonial time. So 19th century, you have a jihad, jihad of this Uthman and so, uh, they una, uh, unified um, uh, the house of city-states, and you have the Sokoto Caliphate. Uh, just to, to have an idea, this is the area where Boko Haram, especially in Borno, this is the era of, uh, so the jihad is an important tradition. And this become the most uh, um, important from a commercial point of view. Most of the slaves also uh, to the Guinea coast were coming from this area. And uh, um, what I'm trying to understand how these different kind of money were working and in which layer of the market. Uh, of course, we are so uh, following uh, Hopkins uh, structure of the trade, we have long distance market, regional market and the local markets. Uh, so uh, the problem is to understand how this money were different in the different layers. Uh, I did find uh, also following uh, Kuroda uh, example that cowrie, of course, was working in the regional market, but also uh, between the major cities like Sokoto, Kano, Katsina, and Zaira. And, uh, and it was like a moneta franca between different zones. At the local level, uh, you mean in the countryside of the city, probably use grains and of course uh, salt. But then, uh, the most because these states were based on slave trade and uh, slave plantation, most of the slaves were coming from here and here. And uh, they were paying uh, this, uh, this to stay, uh, Borno at this time was using cloth. Um, so what is interesting, that Kano was starting to make textiles, I'm paying slave with textiles. <laughs> because they had all the places that um, they used cloth as currency, have a system that you have from a uh, shirt to uh, strips of cloth, different weight. So the pro they, they were using cowrem, but they were using cowrem to buy textiles and financing textiles. But then the trade, local trade, they were going here paying uh, slaves with textiles, coming back, selling to North African uh, 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 for dollars. So they were making, uh, so I'm trying to follow why, I mean, the different currents, how did they use this, uh, who was using this currency? My idea that uh, Hausa traders, 
the diaspora were, uh, was using cowries and textiles. And uh, of course, I have just an evidence about dollars where just Arabs manage the supply of uh, currency. So, uh, of course, what is interesting about uh, this ghost money, for instance, um, in Borno, they start to use cloth money, but they were the units of accounts was an old copper coins, uh, uh, units. So you always have uh, this ghost money uh, because they were changing most of the time. Just to say, we don't have any evidence between uh, the 17th and 18th century. So my, uh, so sorry if it's a problem with the, uh, and uh, so I, uh, I was trying to see how it was working the different currencies. And uh, yes, uh, so I tried to see in the 19th century. Uh, uh, so we have still got uh, in the West gold dust. Uh, no, what? Uh, yes, um, and it was the other one. Um, so, so my idea that uh, in the 19th century, what happened? There was another change with the introduction of Maria Teresa dollar. And um, what I did find following the Maria Teresa dollar and this different trade, long distance trade, uh, first of all, uh, you have the development of proper uh, political, uh, juridical, and commercial institution in the caliphate for the first time in a proper um, African states. Because with the jihad, you have a, a proper. And so you start to have a proper Islamic institution and also the rise of physically brokerage house. It was called the Megida. And uh, they, especially for changing money, they were very important. These people, you know, the coming the Arabs are arriving in Kano, but going to this, and they were arranging everything, also changing money. So they were very important uh, houses. And especially the uh, sources are, uh, I mean, it's important that you have a system of enforcing commercial and credit arrangement. Is it very important? And you have the Qadi, this institution, the judge. I was really working. I mean, so many say, you can go around with gold on your head and you are safe. That we are talking about Africa, 19th century, that is not. Uh, so you needed, uh, I've seen for credit, long distance credit, you need some security, locally security, otherwise, it doesn't work. And, uh, and then, because of this security, and um, uh, you start to, uh, to develop uh, an exchange bill. And the capital was coming especially from Gadames. Gadames is just uh, south of Tripoli. But, and you had uh, uh, also Jewish merchants investing in this. And then uh, uh, they were then they have um, agents in Kano exchanging, so it was possible to have this, this system. And uh, this system was uh, uh, screwed up, pointed out by the Maria Teresa dollar that was important as, uh, as they was functioning a buffering, switching uh, local Sudanic mar market from international market. Even below exchange was connected with. Uh, the, um, with the, the spread of Maria Teresa dollar. And then you have an exchange rate between uh, Maria Teresa dollar and local money, so you can have the whole system. And uh, I try to see on uh, the 19th century, Tim Timbuktu, uh, they still have got ways, but was a ghost money, and they also, especially was in millet, on, uh, on cloth strip, the way it was basically. And uh, then in the Sokoto Caliphate, we have Maria Teresa dollar bill of exchange and uh, slaves in Adamawa, sometimes slaves to be used, Kauri in, um, uh, in Kano, but in Adamawa, cloth strip. But in Borno, you never have credit. So uh, Borno was really the leading trans saharan place why you never had uh, you have cloth strip 
it's interesting, for instance, um, the ruler of Borno asked for a, um, I say a stamp to stamp coin to this traveler because they never use bill of exchange. One of the uh, principal things was because political reason, not security, and uh, North African traders were not uh, developing this. Uh, this is what I try from my few evidence to <laughs> thank you.